Hello everybody and welcome to a new series on introductory programming in Python. What we're going to do in this first video is we're going to get all of the software installed that we're going to need in order to do some coding on our machine. Now my software setup might differ from yours. Uh, if you want to use a different setup that is totally up to you. Uh, what I'm going to use is the Anaconda installation which has Python, some libraries, uh, the spider development environment, uh, all that stuff pre-installed, which I find really good for people who are just getting started uh, with Python because installing some of the libraries through the command line can be a little bit intimidating. Um, I'm also going to be using for my primary development environment Visual Studio Code. So I'll show you how to set that up as well. Uh, so let's get started. So as I said, these are the instructions for installing on Windows. Uh, so let's actually figure that out. So if you go to this web page right here, uh, docs.anaconda.com slash anaconda slash install slash windows, um, that'll take you to these installation instructions, which you can follow uh, if you wish. I'm just going to get started in downloading the files. So you can see when you open it up, uh, it figures uh, the version is going to be a 64-bit version, Python 3.9. There is an option somewhere to get a version for Python 2.7. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Let's just use a modern version of Python. So the most modern version of Python is Py Python 3.10, uh, but Python 3.9 is going to do perfectly fine for our cases. So if you click on this button, that will download the Anaconda distribution. It's about a half a gigabyte, so I actually have pre-downloaded it just to speed things up. So I've got that installed right here. Okay, so the installation process is quite straightforward in Windows. Uh, you just accept the license agreement. Um, Anaconda is made uh, primarily out of open source software, uh, so this is a pretty benign license agreement. Uh, when you get the option of installing it for all users on your computer or just you, uh, it is recommended that you use just you. Um, this is a single user machine in this case. This is just my laptop, so I'm going to install it just for me. Uh, the only time you would ever want to do this for all users is if you have multiple people in your household and they all want to use Python. Uh, so in that case, you'll need the admin password. Now, personally, I like to put all of my development stuff in a particular directory. So I'm going to put this into uh, my D drive um, and then backslash dev slash anaconda. Okay. Then it gives us an option. Do we want to add Anaconda 3 to the path environment variable? I'll talk a little bit about the path environment variable a little bit later. Uh, we don't want to select this because uh, when you install Anaconda, it actually creates a special version of the command prompt, uh, specifically with all the environment set up properly. Uh, so we'll do that instead. Uh, the box where it says register Anaconda as my default Python 3.9, that is a good idea. That way when you type in Python uh, the command prompt, it will use this particular version of Python. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. It's pretty quick. Uh, not as quick as it is at the beginning. You can click details if you want to see all the things that are being installed, but you can see these are some of the libraries that are being installed. So scikit-learn uh, and, uh, and so on. These are uh, <clears throat> neural network frameworks and there's also some uh, information visualization frameworks and stuff. Uh, that's why I said that Anaconda is really nice because it does have a lot of things in pre-installed that it makes it much easier for you if you're just getting started. However, we can always install more libraries if we want to um, at a later time. Okay, so while this is installing, let me just let that run in the background. I'm going to talk about Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code has become the default uh, programming environment for programmers of all programming languages. So it's heavily recommended. It's really nice. It has a lot of really nice features. But I guess the best feature about it is that it's really lean and light, so it can start up really quickly. Whereas if you want to install, and this is a common misconception, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code are actually completely different software packages. If you were to install Visual Studio, it's a big package. It takes a long time to install. It takes a long time to start it up. It has a lot of capability, but basically with Visual Studio Code, it's very lean and light and you install extensions that uh, add support for the things that you specifically need. All right, so we could download this. Again, just to save time, I have pre-installed this as well, so I've got this loaded up right here. So I'll start that up in a second. 
But let's just check on the status of our anaconda. It says installation complete. Everything is good there. And then we're finally done. It, it wants to do some pop-ups. I'm just going to say no to that. Okay. Let's first of all verify that Anaconda is working on its own. So I'm just going to go open up the search bar here. And I type in Anna. You can see that it gives me a couple of options. I can open up the Anaconda Navigator, which is a graphical environment that lets me choose uh, certain packages to open up. But the one that I'm interested in here is this Anaconda prompt. You can see it says Anaconda 3 in brackets. There's also PowerShell, depending on what you're used to using at the command prompt. If you're not using, used to using command prompt at all, just do what I'm doing, which is the Anaconda prompt. Basically what the Anaconda prompt is, is, is a normal command, Windows command prompt, but it has all the environment set up specifically to use this version of Python that we just installed. And this is the same thing. This is the normal Windows PowerShell. If you have that installed, uh, then you can use Windows PowerShell instead. I think because this is available on all Windows systems, I'll use this one. So when I open that up, uh, it creates a nice command prompt window, but it does say Anaconda prompt. I'll just show you something real quick. Um, the way programs run in, uh, in Windows is when you type in a program at the command prompt, like Python, for instance, it looks in an environment variable called the path. And basically what path is, it's a big string that contains a list of directories. And Windows is going to look in each of those directories to see if it finds a program called python.exe. And we can see that uh, environment variable. If we just type in echo uh, percent path percent, and it actually you can see at the very beginning, there's a bunch of directories that correspond to the the d slash dev slash anaconda three folder that I installed anaconda in. You can see a bunch of those have been added. So all the way up to here, this is all the changes that were made by the installer for this specific environment. So that actually means that if there's something in one of these subfolders here. Uh, so, for example, if there's something inside the dev anaconda folder, uh, then I type it in from the command prompt right here, even though I'm not inside that folder, I can just type in something like Python, and it should actually find it. So now that I typed in Python, you can see that I'm actually in the Python environment. So we're running Python 3.9.7. That's the version that we just installed. Um, it's reasonably new, uh, and this is uh, putting us into a... Uh, in interactive mode in Python. That literally means that we can start typing in some Python code here. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but you know, you can do things like uh, calculations here. We can type in mathematical expressions and it'll tell you the answer immediately. Uh, the way that we are going to be programming is we're going to be writing our code into a file and then we'll be executing the file all at once. And we don't usually use interactive mode, uh, but there are some good demonstration reasons why you might want to use this. But to exit out of this mode, we just did this to confirm that it was running. Uh, we can hit quit. All right, so let's leave that for the moment and let's install Visual Studio Code. So remember that I have it in my downloads here. VS Code user setup. That's just what you get when you download right here. So I'm just going to install that here. So again, accept the agreement. And I just want to put it in the same folder. So I'm going to put it in d slash dev. It's called Microsoft VS Code. All right, and again, with the options here, personally, I'm not a big fan of creating a desktop icon. I like to keep my desktop nice and clear, uh, but I like all of these options. So for example, these two add in, they're called shell uh, commands. And basically what it means is in Windows Explorer, you can right click on a file or you can right click on a directory and open it up in Visual Studio Code. And I like to do that. Uh, it's really quite convenient. It's also possible from the command line to type in something like code and then the name of the directory or code and then the name of the file, and it'll open that up in Visual Studio Code as well. This uh, third option here is saying, well, if it sees any files that are supported by Visual Studio Code, like Python files, .py files, then it'll automatically register this as an editor so they can just right click on it and it'll show up as one of the editors that you could use to open that file. And then again, finally add this to the path. That's so how I can, just like with, uh, with uh, Python, I could just type in uh, Python from the command prompt and the path variable contained a directory somewhere that had python.exe in it. Similarly, in this case, somewhere in one of those path directories, there's going to be a code.exe, which is, allows me to execute Visual Studio Code from the command line if I want. 
which you know, is a pretty useful thing to know how to do. All right, while that's installing, let's just double check to make sure that the environment is working and then we're going to create a simple program. Okay, fair enough. It actually worked already, so uh, let's never mind that. Let's put that on hold for a second. So I'm just going to open up Visual Studio Code so that we can see what's going on. So I've got my, my font sizes set really, really high just to make sure that everybody can see uh, what's going on. But this is the basic environment. If I want to create a new file, I can go to File New or I can do Control N. So new file here. And then you can pick select a language like it says, or you can literally just start typing. Uh, so for example, here's a really simple Python program. We could say something like, hello from Python. And so this is just the keyword print. And then inside some round brackets, we've got uh, a quoted string here. Now I'm just using single quotes, but you can also use double quotes, but you have to be consistent. If you use a single quote at the beginning, Make sure they use a single quote at the end, and we'll be talking about this in a future video. Okay, so I'm just going to save this file now. So I've got a folder all set up, so I'm going to call this the uh, test install.py. So now that we've saved it as a py, a bunch of things happen. First of all, some syntax highlighting happens uh, in the editor, so it kind of shows me some things that kind of make sense. Uh, it helps me to understand the program based on the colors. So for example, things that are all yellow here, these are part of the string. And this is a keyword or a function that we can invoke uh, inside the, the program. It also gives us some uh, suggestion here of what extensions do you want to install. And absolutely, we could do that, uh, but I'm going to show you how to do that kind of manually just so you get a little bit of a feel for uh, Visual Studio. So over here, this is where we are right now. This is the file explorer. Uh, but there's a bunch of other options we can, you know, search and replace. You can do a whole bunch of things. This is, allows you to integrate with various source control, uh, including Git. Uh, this allows you to debug, and it automatically opens up when you're debugging your program. We'll do that as well. And this one right here is the most important one for right now, is how to install extensions. So if I click on that, I can type in Python in the search bar, and we'll see what comes up. And you can see that there's this one called Python made by Microsoft, the makers of Visual Studio Code. Uh, and so this is uh, basically an intentional add-on that you would normally add if you wanted to do Python programming. So I'm just going to click Install. And it doesn't take too long to install. And now, when I open up my Python program, and I'm going to switch back to the Explorer view, I have... Oh, and that is just because I need to select the interpreter. Okay, so down here, uh, there's an option down here to select which version of Python you have. I only have the one, so this should be pretty easy. So when I click on it, it gives me the option of finding the one uh, that's in the folder where we saved Anaconda. And so this is where that python.exe file is. So unlike in the command prompt, we don't have a uh, path variable inside Visual Studio Code. Uh, we actually have to know where the various uh, interpreters are. And we can add a whole bunch of them and switch between them inside Visual Studio Code, which is pretty handy. If I want to test this to make sure that it still works in Python 3.10, uh, then I can do that. So anyway, once I have selected that, I can run the program. And you can see that it says, hello from Python. So the program seems to be working just fine. Let's go back to our Anaconda prompt here. And I did install, uh, I did say that I wanted Visual Studio to have it added to the command, uh, to the path variable. Uh, but if I actually go back and I execute this, I just pushed up twice on the cursor, by the way, to go up two commands. Um, you actually will see that nothing has changed with the path. It's exactly the same path that it has been since the beginning. And um, that's because you have to restart uh, a command prompt in Windows anyway, in order to recognize the changes to the path. So initialize the path when you start up the prompt. But if I wanted to, I could navigate to a folder. So for example, I could go to my D drive and I could use something like code dev. If you remember, I do have a folder called dev and that would open up the entire dev folder into uh, Visual Studio Code. So that's an option anyway. All right, but let's actually go to this uh, test install uh, folder here. And Sorry, I can't remember <laughs> where it's supposed to be. Uh, there we go, summer 2022. 
and okay, so I've created this introduction to Python programming folder, and you can see I'm just using cd by the way to change directory, so cd. And if you want to just start typing it, you can hit tab to finish the command. If it's able to figure out you're probably typing this folder name, it'll automatically complete it for you. DIR just says show me what the contents of the directory are. And you can see we've got this file called test underscore install. I want to run this program from the command line as well, just to make sure everything is working well in every way. So in Windows, you just use Python. So the name of the program is called Python. What you typically find in Mac OS or Linux is that it'll name it either Python 2 if you're using a really old version of Python or Python 3 if you're using any version of Python after version 3.0, which we're using. Uh, so if I was on a Mac uh, right now or if I was on a Linux machine, I would type in Python 3. But for simplicity here, let's just type in Python and there we go. Seems to run it all right. Now, if you do find that you need a library for something, uh, what you can do is you can use the pip command in order to install. And so the pip command allows you to just do pip command pip install, and then whatever your library uh, is called. Okay, so let's actually do one of those. I've got a uh, I've got a page up here for Pygame, and if you don't know what Pygame is, it's a very cool library for uh, for making games in Python. And some of my videos on my channel actually use this. So I'm just going to show you how to do this. Notice here that this command for getting Pygame installed says dash u, uh, dash user rather, is going to install it in the user's home directory. It's not going to install it globally, which is good because then I don't need administrator permissions in order to do that. So that's a good thing. But also please notice that they're using Python 3 here. Remember on a Windows machine, you'd usually just type in Python. Okay, so let's type that part uh, by hand. Let's bring back to the command prompt here. I'm just going to type in Python manually, and then I'm going to paste in the rest of the command, exactly as is. And again, the pip, which you can all actually already uh, install, you can say uh, pip install, or you can say python -m pip. Uh, these are basically the same thing because pip is actually a Python program. Uh, but there is an alias for it uh, so that you can run it directly by just typing pip. So I could literally just, just type pip install dash u pi game dash dash user. Okay. Now, actually, I already have this installed. So it actually puts it into my uh, home folder here. You can see in Windows, this is your home folder. So it puts it into a Python 3.9 subfolder where all of the packages are. Okay. So again, this is a subfolder of my home directory. So only I can use it. That's okay because that I really installed Anaconda just for myself. And again, this is only a single user machine in this case. All right, and there's even on the, on the website here, there actually is a, uh, a command for testing it out. So there's a bunch of built-in games that we can try. I, uh, again, have to change. Uh, oops, that's not what I meant to copy. <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, I have to change this to Python instead of Python 3. But otherwise should work unchanged. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> Let's try it again. There we go. So we got a little uh, simple, simple game. Uh, one of the games that's developed as part of the documentation for Python. So pretty neat. All right, so definitely convinced that this software is working fine. We're going to do most of our development inside uh, Visual Studio Code because it's quite convenient. The syntax highlighting is very handy, uh, but we're going to edit our code and we're going to run it as a big bulk. Uh, so we just save it as a .py file and then we'll just click the play button. Execute it right in here so I don't really have to leave this window at any point in time. However, it's a good idea to know how to do things from the command line sometimes. And notice that there is basically a command line down here. So it is possible for me to type in, you know, pip install pygame down here if I wanted to, uh, and that is totally possible, but this is really the exact same uh, environment. Well, this is actually a PowerShell, uh, as you can see from the PS over here, uh, but you know the command environment is basically the same. Okay, um, all right, so that's it for today. Uh, what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna start learning some Python programming. So we'll introduce basically types and variables. So I'll see you next time.